welcome to Rotor Riot. My name's Alex Vanover. I'm Bubby FPV. And today we have a really exciting episode of Rotor Riot. For the past, basically since Rotor Riot's existence, we've been flying five inch style drones or like micro style drones. The, the five inch drone is the most popular type of freestyle racing drone that's on the market. It's durable, it's fast. It can carry a GoPro camera to get those sweet freestyle videos. Yep. But we're kind of moving into a little bit of a new age. And today we're gonna bring out the Cinemate. The Cinemate is actually a much bigger drone as you can see. This swings seven inch propellers. And it's also X8, so X there's a lot more motors on there. Yeah, exactly. So the whole goal with something like this is that we can carry a much bigger camera than a GoPro. Yeah. And by doing so, we can really start to get into more of the filming side of things. I mean, you can use GoPros for a lot of shoots, but when we start getting on these like higher end productions, you say the word GoPro to a director or producer <laughs> and they're just gonna laugh in your face. They're like, yeah, no. So I primarily fly the Red Komodo, I would say about 95% of the time. We also use the Wave camera, which is like a super uh, high resolution, uh, high frame rate. So you can get really awesome uh, slow motion shots. Basically any camera that has something like a global shutter and is this type of form factor that can fit on this thing. That's why we have eight motors because we need all that power to lift that kind of camera but still try and make it fly like this a little bit. Because those cameras are like pretty big, right? Yeah, I mean, you're probably talking at least two, 3,000 grams for some of these cameras. All right, so you've had like a lot of experience with flying these drones and I've never flown one before. Absolutely, so. I'd love to teach you. And we're out here at a park today in Orlando and we have some really awesome tree canopies that we can fly through. But we're gonna start you off in an open field. Today, we're not gonna be, you know, just like freestyling this thing around. That's not really our goal. Today is gonna be more about talking how to fly a Cinelifter style drone. I like to call them heavy lift FPV Heavy drones. lift FPV drones. Heavy lift FPV because if you talk about, you know, cinematic flying, right? You can do cinematic flying with something like this. Or a Cinewoop, so like. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So what we want to differentiate is like heavy lift being something that carries an expensive camera, a heavy setup, and there's a lot more thought process that needs to go into it than just like, you know, putting your five inch quad up in the air. So later this week, we're gonna be chasing some paramotors, right? Ooh, so like, yeah. that'll be pretty sick. So I, I, I think it's good to learn here so yeah. I don't like mess up too bad there. Yeah, absolutely. And oftentimes, Bubby, when we go on these really big shoots, we have what's called a scout day or a prep day. So what we do is we'll we'll go out, we'll test the drones out. So this is actually very common practice as well to make sure all your equipment works. That way, when you get to the actual shoot day, everything's dialed in, your flying's dialed in, you know what to expect with the drone, and we can get some really awesome shots. So on this drone, we're gonna be actually simulating the weight of a red Komodo with this ugly thing right here. Um, this is actually a replica of a BGH-1, which is a little bit smaller and lighter than the Komodo, but we have a GoPro attached here, so we'll still get some awesome HD footage. But the idea is Bubby can learn to fly this setup and get used to it, and I highly recommend anyone else out there who's learning to fly heavy lift, go in and do a dummy weight camera. This one has some sand and some lead weight in it. Um, that way you don't have to risk a really expensive camera or a really expensive lens. You can tune the drone, you can learn to fly it, and if you crash it like this, it's gonna be a lot cheaper than if you crashed it with a heavy camera. It's gonna simulate to the best of our ability the weight of what you're gonna be flying with the actual camera. It'll be a little bit lighter, mm -hmm. but it'll, it'll feel pretty close. The drone is also pretty expensive, so like, could I like, practice framing up shots with this yeah. drone. Um, oftentimes we like to use something like a five inch quad when we're on set. If we're worried about the interference that there might be, the RF, it's much better to wreck something like this yeah. than it is to wreck something that's really, really expensive. Even with the, just the dummy weight, it's still a really expensive drone, right? Yeah. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by Bubby just flying this drone around, getting the feel from it, and then we're gonna just kind of practice some shots, something that you might experience on the paramotor shoot. And we're gonna walk through starting on this thing all the way up to flying this thing. I don't know why, but like I just thought right when I take off it would be like a lot harder to, I don't know, fly. This thing flies smooth. Yeah, Tyler did a really good job with it. Oh, there's some wobbles. That's fine. Yeah, it's a big drone. So like, what do you mean by it's a big drone? What does that have to do with anything? So you have bigger propellers, right? So the props, because they're bigger, they're not going to spin up quite as fast as like a five inch prop would. That's why five inch quads are so popular is because it's kind of that perfect balance between power that can lift something like a GoPro, but also the control. Um, now the control is really, really good on this, but it's gonna respond a little bit slower than if you were flying like a five inch quad. And the way you're flying is very, very well. You won't wanna fly a Komodo like that. Yeah, for sure. You could, you definitely could. That is, there's nothing against doing that. But you just want to assess uh, as well. The Komodo is going to be a little bit heavier. Oh, it so will be heavier. Than it this. will be heavier than this. So it's everything's going to feel a little bit slower. But Tyler Crane from Road Ride has done an excellent job setting this thing up, and it looks like it's flying on rails. Yeah, it it feels really good. Like it honestly feels pretty similar to like my normal quads. Like I, I I'd probably if you ha if you just handed this to me, I think it's just a seven inch. Like, right. oh, well, it's spinning seven inch props, right? Yeah, it is okay. seven inch props. But it's an X8, so I mean, you got a lot of motor, a lot of weight. 
and that's where you know you just gotta be careful of the responses coming out of a move. But I mean, you're you're flying it very well. Dude, it sounds so cool. Yeah, it does. I, okay, here's one thing. I feel like it floats a lot more. Yep. You have eight motors, and they're all idling, so it, it does float. So the number one rule that I like to talk about when it comes to flying heavy lift drones, especially when you're on a set, don't crash. Mm -hmm. Most directors are used to these big drones that aren't even FPV. We call them uh, heavy lift drones as well. They're just not FPV. Um, they carry these big cameras, and those drones almost never crash. There's very rarely incidents. Uh, they're not pushing like we are. They're not doing the same types of uh, hard flying. But a director doesn't really know the difference. They hire you as a pro pilot. They expect you to not have any mistakes, right? So number one rule when you're on a job, do not crash. I feel like the battery life on this is pretty good. We're at three minutes and 48 yep. seconds. It is light. Keep that in mind. The BGH1, which is basically the replica camera, the dummy weight we have on here, is one of the lighter cameras that's out there. It's a great camera. It shoots awesome video but it's not a red Komodo. The, the red Komodo is twice the weight of this camera. So it's gonna add another thousand grand to the drone. So just keep that in mind. All your movements are gonna be a little swooshier. So here's one thing that's interesting. Since there's motors on the bottom, I'm not the best at landing. So I need to practice those yep. landings. Nice first. and smooth landings and cut. Yay. Beautiful. Going into it, I honestly thought it'd be for some reason a lot harder to fly. Like mm -hmm. I would have issues just controlling it, but like yeah. it flies really well. Um, but you did a great job. I think it's time that we maybe come up with a shot or a sequence. I might fly it once and just kind of show you the idea mm -hmm. of what we want to do. And then we'll go through the sequence of start to finish to get a shot and get you ready for flying around the paramotors. Cool. Let's do it. One thing that directors really, really like to see when you're doing like cinematic heavy lift FPV is they oftentimes are asking us to reveal the location. Okay. Right. So we're here at this pretty awesome location in Orlando. It's a park, but it's backed up to this lake, right? You're going to start up at about 200 feet. So like really high. And you're just going to be looking down to start with. You're okay. going to be diving. So it's just water, water, and you're going to pull up, not necessarily right above the water, but you know, to make it look like you're going to hit the water. Okay. From there, you're just going to do a straight line. You don't have to be really far straight out. Straight line going this way, right? This way, right? And then you're just going to come into this tree canopy. Let's do it with the five inch quad first. That way, if we have any issues with video, signal, anything like that, we're gonna discover them on the five inch quad and you get to lose it in the water with your GoPro. And then once you nail the shot, you know the line very well, then we're gonna go ahead and move to the thick and we'll get you some practice. Cool, gotcha. So we'll just go ahead and change this over. We'll get it on a 4K, four by three with 24 FPS. Okay. Um, and ideally what I like to do is, I like to run a one over 48 degree shutter. One then, over 48. You, then you use an ND filter to compensate for that. We don't really have, we don't ND, have filters any ND filters that we're gonna use, yeah. so we're just gonna leave the shutter speed on auto. Sometimes we'll be on a job and we very rarely fly GoPro, but maybe they want an impossible shot. An impossible shot. And so we just fly the GoPro because maybe it's too small of a gap or something like that. Dude, we're gonna be in the goggles and this guy is gonna come up and like, I'm sitting Sean, down. are you ready to defend us with your life? <laughs> that way, go that way, go that way. <laughs> So go ahead and uh, turn around. Yeah, there you go, there's your dive. Now slowly pull up. Nice. And then keep it low. Yeah, keep it low, keep it low, keep it low, keep it low, keep it low. Okay, this is good right here, this is good pace. And you're aiming for that right gap, which is clear. This one, right? Yep. Do I go through these gaps over here? Yep, then you're gonna go, uh, no, not through those gaps. Well, that's why I messed it up there. Yep, so you were coming in a little fast, that's okay. And then left, and then the bridge. All right, now you're gonna swing right. Oh, there's the birds. <laughs> nice, Bubby. And then just a nice straight shot. Just wait till out of the water, hold it. Hold it, hold it, and then you're done. Let's try it again. Yeah, because I messed up that first line. Yeah, and so just- So how do I take that turn a little bit better? Just let the drone really slow down as you get into it. So go ahead and start your move. There you go, beautiful. That's much better. Left, 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 left. Okay, this is good, actually. So this is how we adjust the shot. Up through. So there, you're not gonna wanna be as aggressive. See, okay. I keep, this turn is like really hard to do in a really smooth line. Once you start getting towards the edge of the water, just slowly pull back on the pitch a little bit and just let the drone slow down naturally. See, I was just slowing down perfect. It's gonna feel like an eternity, that's good. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm, that's the biggest thing, is like it feels like it's taking- It's okay, don't even worry about that. 
left. That squirrel is just loving you. Now just, so you're letting it die, which is, this is good, That's, this is good, Bubby. Nice and smooth, move, slowly. You don't have to turn right immediately once you're through that bridge. Just let it be natural, real smooth. That little bit of dutch that you have there at the end, you know, where you're banked? Yeah. That's not super great. So it's it's good to have that like rolling move, you know, like that Star Wars-y type flying over the trees, but just you don't want to kind of exit in dutch like that. Oh, you got this gear. All right, so I think it's time that we get you on the thick. Yes. You want me to do the shot one time on the thick? Yeah, I, I'd okay. like that. Yeah, I'll show you. I'll show you what it, what it kind of looks like. That way, I'll kind of help you see what the speed I'm talking about and like what those transition moments should look like. Yeah, because, man, when I was going over that land, it felt like forever. Right. And, I, and you were still saying, you're going too fast. And I'm like, what? Right. What they would probably do if that was an actual shot is they would speed ramp that part. But if you come in over the land too fast, you're going to enter here way too quick, and you're not going to really see what's happening. So you want to fly really, really slow, because you can always just speed it up. <laughs> By the Bobito rates. Here we go. Really small movements. See, I'm just, I'm not changing pitch. Yeah. But the drone is slowing down. Very small movements. So you're going really slow. Yeah. I'm coming more of a dive, you're more descending, so... A little bit, yeah. Yeah. So right there, there's, there's a little correction. Yeah. We're gonna hold it, hold it, hold it, and there was a shot. I'm just gonna walk through this one part for you one more time. I just want you to kind of visually see this. It's like right here, slowing Start down by just giving it power. I'm not pitching back, I'm just giving it power to slow it down. It's okay if the camera angle is not perfectly centered here because we're showing off the tree canopy. Yeah. Do you think you can do it? Yeah. Let's do it. Go. Yeah, so just fly the drone around for a moment, get comfy with it before you do the shot. You know, do some rolls if you I'm, need to. I'm honestly already really comfortable with how it feels. Yeah. It's pretty lightweight for a heavy lift drone, so I mean, it, it you should be pretty comfy with it. Again, you don't need to nail it on the first shot, just get a good shot. Oftentimes, like I said, you have a very limited amount of time, so it's better just to get a good shot out of the way, and then you can improve from there. Remember, very, very small movements on the controls. Any little movement you do is gonna be shown in the camera. Yeah, like that little movement yep. will be shown. Let it elevate and slow down naturally. Let it elevate. Beautiful, now take your time here, take your time here. There's your birds on the left. Take your time going to the right. A little bit more right, yeah, your little kind of like catio office. There you go. It doesn't look good from a uh, like a filmmaker standpoint. And boom, beautiful. I like how you wipe that tree. And then nice straight level. Three, two, one. All right, that's your first one. Let's try another one while we're already out there. Yep. So what do you think you could have done better there? After I went through the pavilion, I think right. I was not very smooth, so. Beautiful, that's good. You can keep your speed up for now. You know, this is good right here. You don't need to accelerate. Again, you almost don't want to even touch the controls. Just let the drone fly. Yep. Now let it just start slowing down. You're gonna Finding enter. the wind is a little bit interesting. Yep. There you go, this is good. Nice and smooth. I like how you're lining that up. All right, this is a good speed. All right, now as it elevates, it's gonna slow down naturally. See how it does that? Beautiful. Nice, Bubby. Beautiful. I'm like, feel so focused, like trying to get the shot. Yep. Absolutely. When you dive over the pavilion, try and make it as smooth as you can. Okay. Even if it's not like you're looking down as much, just try and make that move as smooth as you can. It's my only critique from that. I think flying cinematic uh, heavy lift drones is gonna make all your flying so much better because you have to really think about every little move that you do. I often nag at pilots who use like hyper smooth for freestyle Help me. because you can make little tiny corrections and it's not visible, but when you're flying something like this, even with stabilization, the stabilization isn't as good. So you have to be so ultra smooth. I liked how you were getting close to those treetops as well as you're coming up. 
really shows off what we're doing. And descend, nice and smooth, nice and smooth. Even if we go wide here, we're beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Nice turning and turn. Nice and low, I like that. A little less roll. There you go. Excellent, excellent, excellent. You got it. Yay! You got it. I gotta hold one, two, three. There you go. You remembered. Anytime you think that you're done, just count one beat longer. Not bad, Landon. Sir, good job. Thank you. I'm actually very, very impressed. You know, you saw how every time you did the run, it got better. But sometimes on these sets, you don't get tons of chances, right? Yeah. You may only get one or two chances at some points if it's like a really busy set day. So my biggest recommendation is don't crash. Go out there and try and make your first run count because it might be the only one that you get. Yeah. Make it good, but don't risk it too much. In that case, you got progressively better every single time. And oftentimes on set, you'll get a few tries like that. Cool. Going into this, I was a little bit scared of like mm -hmm. even crashing it, but like, yeah. After flying it and realizing how good it flies, I'm really excited to like try to do other stuff with it, hopefully in the future. Yeah, it's just a normal quad. It was really all this. It it's an expensive normal quad, yeah. but it flies the same, really. It's just heavier. The power is pretty much the same, though. And honestly, man, you did such a great job. You're already a flowy, smooth pilot, so I knew you'd pick it up pretty fast, but I mean, third take, in my opinion, was a money shot for what we were trying to accomplish here with the limited resources that we have. And honestly, I think it's time that we go out and chase something for real and see how you can really do under that pressure. Yeah. And, you know, and we'll talk about camera lenses and we'll kind of dive into that next. So make sure you stay tuned for a future episode because we may be getting some awesome stuff with this drone. And we're yeah. gonna strap a real camera to this. We'll talk about more stuff regarding the camera lens choices. Make sure you subscribe to the Rotorite channel. Smash that notification bell so that way you know when we come out with this next video. Yeah. Be sure to subscribe to Bubby. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Check out the store. Thank you so much again for supporting us and we'll see you on the next one. Peace.